Less than four three. What is prime factorization, Emily? Thank you for raising your hand. Um, it's like um, prime and under. Yeah. Okay. Close. Why don't you copy the note? What is a prime number? Great. A prime number is a number that has two factors. Yeah, what's a composite number? <coughs> it's a number. A hashtag. Oh, I forgot about the hashtag thing. I'm going to have to write this now as that used to be the number symbol. Now it's the hashtag. So it's a number. It's a number made of more than two factors. So is 30 composite or prime, Laura? It's composite because you make 30 by using 2, 3, and 5. Okay? What are 2, 3, and 5? AJ? No, what are they? What kind of factors? Prime. They're prime factors. These are prime factors that make 30, right? And so this is the formula for making 30 using prime factors. That's why this is called the prime factorization, which is what we're talking about today, okay? Now, remember, prime has exactly two factors, right? One in itself. Prime numbers always have two factors. So, which numbers are neither prime nor composite? Amelia. One. The number one is not prime. That's definitely not composite. What other one? Zero. Zero. One and zero. Any others? You said seven? No, you make seven with one and seven. How about <laughs> negative one? Negative one. Oh, yeah. Negative zero? <laughs> Close. Alright, let's go on. Prime factorization, so is the recipe then for making a number, okay? Remember I said, uh, or it, you put in your notes that a com composite number is kind of like a compound in science. Like H2O is the, the formula for making what compound? What, Adam? Water. Water, right. And how do you make water? With what? What does H2O mean? Yeah, no, what is it? Come on. Two hydrogen molecules. Two hydrogen molecules and one oxygen molecule. Both hydrogen and oxygen are what? Elements They're on the periodic table. Excellent. They're elements on the periodic table. Right. So they are, they're found in a pure form. They're not combined with anything else. Hydrogen and oxygen are both elements. You need two molecules of hydrogen for every one molecule of oxygen, and you put them together and you get water. So water is a compound, okay? The same thing is true in math. You have composite numbers that are made up of prime numbers. So how do you find the prime factorization, or the formula, or the recipe, or whatever you want to call it? It uh, tells you how many prime numbers you need to make the number. Okay? It's not prime hashtags, it's prime numbers. Okay, so if you want to just change that, you know. Um, so let's say that you have a number that you know is composite. And you need to write the prime factorization. Now what? Well, you have to make a factor tree. So you have to factor the number. Okay? Here's how you factor the number. You pull prime numbers out of the number. 
So what prime numbers go into 825? Well, it ends in a 5, so we know 5 is a factor, right? So let's pull how many 5s go into 825? Thank you, 165. So we divided. 825 divided by 5 is 165. Okay? Now, are these both prime numbers? No. no. Which one is prime, Trinity? No, 5 is prime. 165 is not prime, is it? What goes into 165? Well, what does it end with? It ends in a 5, so we know, does 5 go into 165? Uh, yeah, we can divide this by 5 again. What's six, 165 divided by 5? 33. 33. Is 33 primes? Caleb, what goes into 33? 3 and 11. Are those both prime? Yes. They are, yeah. No other numbers go into 3 or 11 except for what, Jordan? One. one, right. So they're prime. Now, that's step one for writing our prime factorization formula. Step two is to circle the prime numbers in the formula. So 5 is prime. Both 5s are prime. 3 and 11. Okay? Then the third step is to use all those prime factors and write the prime factorization formula. And you're going to put the prime factors in numerical order. Put them in numerical order. So, what's the lowest prime number? What is it? Three. What in our? In oh, our what's that? Oh, okay. three. Three. Times, and we're going to write this as multiplication. Five squared. Times. What? What is it that would make one make 825 times 11? And what would this answer be? What, if you multiply that out, what should it be? Really? That should be 825, right. Good. So you can check your formula and make sure that it equals 825, the number you started with. Okay? Now, what if you have to find the greatest common factor? The greatest common factor. All right? Let's start with um, this. So this is the greatest, not prime factor, but the greatest number that goes into more than one number. All right? The greatest number that goes into both numbers. That's called the greatest common factor. Now, this can be prime or composite. Now, you might be able to find it just by looking at the numbers and knowing what the factors are. What are some numbers that go into 40? 10. Two. 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 Five, four. Four. Five, four. Eight. Eight. Twenty. 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 What's the, how do we do this to make sure we have all of them? Oh, we do the, either the factor tree or the thing where you put one and forty right. and you narrow it down. Two and twenty. Three, 
4 and 10, 5 and 8. Do we have them all? Yes. Yeah. Can you look at this list and know oh. that you have them all? Oh, oh, oh. Never wrote down 6. The 6 oh went to 40? Gosh. I mean, in the 60 list. We haven't made the 60 list yet. Oh, I know that's what you just did. Nope, we're just making the 40 list. Okay? So that's that's one way to do this, is to list the factors. Now we if we list the factors of 60, there's quite a few of them, isn't there? 1 and 60, 2 and 30, 3 and 20, 4 and... 15, 5 and 12, 12. There we go. 6 and 10. 7, 8, 9. No. That's it, right? Now I had to write these going down because otherwise they wouldn't fit. Okay? Now, what's the greatest common factor? Well, look at the biggest number in both lists. Reese, what is it? There's 40 in both lists. 20, right? Sorry about my handwriting on that one. I probably threw you. So the greatest common factor is 20. How do we know? We just listed them all and found it. Okay? Now, that's one way to do this. But there is a faster way than listing all of the factors of both numbers. And that is to use this method, the factor tree. Let me show you how, how much faster this is. You don't have to use this method, but it works really well. Okay? Wait, I'm supposed to erase all this? No, but I didn't have room, Gray. Oh. So let me show you this method. Factor this. 2 and 20, 4 and 5, 2 and 2, right? So these are all the prime factors of 40. 1, 2, 3, 4. We can do the same thing for 60. 2 and 30, 3 and 10, 2 and 5, right? With me so far? Yes. Those that makes 60. So these are the prime factors. Now, find the common factors, meaning that find the factors that are in both numbers. All of the prime factors that are in both. Is there a two, one, two in both? Yeah. Yep. Is there another two in both? Yep, so we're going to use two twos in our formula. Is there a three in both? No. Okay, skip no. three. Is there another two in both? No. Is there a five in both? Yes. 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 Use the fives. Multiply them together, and you get 20. Two squared times five. So 20 is the greatest common factor. Again, you just make that factor tree that I show you how to do in this one. Okay? Hold on, let me finish. And then circle the common factors or find the, the factors that are in both formulas and multiply them together. Works every time. Okay? Now, it also works if there are some variables in the numbers as well. So look at this. What if 40 also had x squared and a y? Okay? And next to the 60 was x and a y squared. Well, uh, let's put one more in there. Let's add a Z. Okay? 
So this has, this is the, the number we're starting with. Instead of just 40, it also has some variables. Pay attention to this. So then how does that change this formula? What else makes this number? Well, there's two x's. So in this formula, we'd also have to have an x times x times y, right? Yes. And then in this one, we'd have to have uh, an x times y times y times z. Right? That would be how we'd write this out in expanded form. So 2 squared times 3 times 5 times x times y times y times z, right? You see that? That's where, if we wrote this out in expanded form, that's how we would make it. Then to, to get the greatest common factor, you do the same thing. You find the common factors. So there is an x in both. There's not another x in both, so we're only going to use one x. There is a y in both. And, but there's not another y in this one, so we're only going to use one y. And there's only a z in this one, so we're not going to use z. We only use the common factors. So then, instead of just 20, we're using 20 times x, times 1x, because there's 1x in both, times y, because there's 1y in both. And this is now the greatest common factor. We just had to add. Uh, the variables that are in both. There's one x in both, kind of the lowest power of the variables that are in both. There's x squared, but this is only x to the first. There's a y squared here, but this is only y to the first. And there's a z here, but there's no z in this one. Z to the zero. No, it's actually z to the first. No, the other, the other problem is z to the zero. Z to the zero, which is one, isn't it? Yep. So if there are variables, you use the variables that are in both numbers in your formula. OK? Let's try one of those from your assignment. Let's do number 22. That's one of your assign one of your uh, numbers that you have to do for tomorrow. Number 22. Okay? You have page 193. Number 22. You're starting with 3y squared and 24y to the third power. And it says to write the greatest common factor. So, we know the factors of 3 are just 1 and 3, right? So we don't have to factor this out. And since 3 is a factor of this one, that's the only common factor, right? So you could do this, but we know that 3 is the only one, is the only possible common factor. That's got to be our greatest common factor factor as far as a number goes. Because 3 goes into both 3 and 24, and there's no other numbers that go into both. <coughs> so for your formula, start with 3. GCF equals 3, but there's also variables. There's y's in both of these. How many could you get out of both? No. You, 
you can't get five out of this one. No, for both of them. Not combined. Oh. It's out of both. No, two. Right. How many of you think it's y squared? You can get two y's out of both of these. Yeah. It's the lowest power. So you could get a y squared out of this. You could get, because this is y times y, and this is y times y times y. So we can get two out of each of them. So put that in your formula. Put that in your answer. 3y squared. y squared goes into this one and this one. And 3 goes into this one and that one. OK? So do 2 to 32 for tomorrow. Page 193, 2 to 32 evens.